episode number 245 with Shamano. Welcome to In It to Win It. I'm Steve Barton. Dan G. Dan G. Oh, that's right. I should have been the Stevie B and, and Dan G. <laughs> you, you made it. It was like Batman and Boy Wonder, and you made it like weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shamano, this is going to be an interesting episode. We uh, we teased him a little bit uh, on the on last week on the show, uh, but yeah. uh, that was a pretty interesting interview. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Ayahuasca, um, the ceremony, uh, what to expect. We even frog went over the poison. frog poison. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love me some frog poison. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> burning. How about, you know, some yeah. you know, a little burning in there. <laughs> a lot of interesting info. Yep. Um, Going to go over some uh, first world problems. Uh, yeah, so Danny and I will just shoot the breeze here, and then uh, we'll bring in uh, Shamano at the uh, at the end of the show. Um, I uh, I experienced a, a first world problem. Um, oh, the other didn't day. Know you had any, Steve? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got I got a couple of them. Um, I wanted to get a bigger gas tank for my uh, for my new truck. Because it's only got a 21 gallon gas tank, uh, well, but the thing will only you? go like 300 miles before I got to fill it up. My old car would do 450. So oh. my expectations, you know, are not quite met here. So I thought maybe if I can get like an aftermarket uh, gas tank that's got like 40 gallons or something, you know, that I can really, uh, you know, you can, like make it to Mexico or um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I I just don't physically have to go to the gas station as often. I'm going to have cool. this truck for the next 10 years and I'm either going to end up filling up uh, 350 times over that period. Or if I get the bigger gas tank, then maybe I only got to fill up, you know, 125. Cool. Uh, it, it would be a time saving device. That's it. Yeah. That's a uh, first world problem right there. It is a first world problem. Yeah. I, AKA uh, white people problems. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I guess on that note, I just got to fess up because I can finally go back to the gas station that I usually go to. Oh, well, did you did you rob them or something? What the? Uh, I didn't really want to say it because it sounds kind of stupid, and I'm kind of stupid. But anyways, <laughs> so the story goes. Uh, well, it was in the morning, about eight o'clock. You know, it's really busy. Okay. I rolled up. Gas. You need some gas, obviously, because that's why you go to the gas station, right? So yeah. I'm filling up. I get a phone call. I'm like, oh, hey. And I was like, oh, no, I'll be there. It was like something I had to do. This is some You're time. filling up your car with gas and you get a phone call when you're doing it. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, yo, hey, what's going on? He got the tank and I'm like, oh, shoot, I'll be right there. So anyways, yeah, get in the, get in the car, start driving off and uh, I look in the rearview mirror and I'm like, why is there a black snake following my car? <laughs> yeah. 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 You were that guy. I was that guy. I, <laughs> you know, these are the people you read about. That was me. <laughs> See those videos? <laughs> Somebody trying to fill up their, their Tesla with gas. Yeah, that was me. Dude. So, That's great. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, oh, shit. I took off with the gas pump in the car. <laughs> so, so I'm like. Was busy at that time, right? All yeah, God's children are watching this because it must have yeah. been loud. Yeah, well, you had to rip off a uh, a gas uh, gas. Well, apparently, they the just kind of like just snap off, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, there's got to be a safety feature. You're not the yeah. first guy to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, and I'm about to turn into the street, and I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta get this thing out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna drive down the yeah. freeway with this. <laughs> yeah, don't want to get on the freeway with this. So I get out. And then everybody's like staring at me and I'm like, what? <laughs> so I just you're supposed to do it? <laughs> yeah. So I just proceeded to the back and I'm like, okay. Cause it was on the other side of the car, unfortunately. So I took out the gas pump from the car and I'm like, 
hold it into my hand and I'm thinking like, well, what do I do with this thing? Do I, I can't go put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's out of service. Yeah. This <laughs> one's just not going to work for anybody after this. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? Take it into the store, put it on the, you know, it's like, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to lay it down right here. <laughs> and everybody's just is like staring at me like, who the frick is this dude? <laughs> so I just laid it on the ground and got in my car and took off and haven't been to that, get that gas station ever since. <laughs> but I just went back for the first time and I don't think they knew who I was. So I think. Oh, okay. They, Good. Yeah. Maybe their uh, turnover rate on employees was enough that no one recognized. Yeah. It. They, well, they <laughs> usually have as a guest. They don't usually stay there very long anyway. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're probably safe. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's not like your usual like uh, gas station attendant. They're only there for like three to six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's unlikely that there's going to be the same people filling up gas and go like, Hey, that's, that's that the guy. dickhead that drove off with the, with the casket. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how that works, you know, and I didn't, was, I didn't, I just didn't want to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't drive off with the gas pump in your car. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we had a fun time, I uh, went up to your place for uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, uh, yeah, where didn't even know I was having mine. that party. Yeah, where your hero and mine won the uh, Super Bowl, Tom Brady. Yes, Number yeah, seven. yeah, that yeah. was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and thanks for bring in that um uh yeah the deviled eggs no that was the uh the, the bean, bean dip. dip they didn't really look like bean dip man uh i gotta talk to you about that yeah the color was a little off huh uh it looked like baby poop <laughs> <laughs> never seen green bean dip before you need to put a disclaimer on that before you put that on my counter next time <laughs> It was the avocado. I blended well, the beans with an avocado, so it made it look... Uh, you get the texture. No, I totally get what you were doing, but you put it next to my famous avocado dip. Yeah. <laughs> so people couldn't <laughs> tell the two apart for the most part. <laughs> and I didn't want to piss you off and let you know that, so I want to apologize on the upfront. Okay, okay. Yeah. What did you think of the deviled eggs, though? Uh, that's what white people bring to uh, parties. That's, that's the, that's a white person like appetizer quintessential, you know, it's not, and it's not, if you don't have the paprika on there, you ain't right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to sprinkle the paprika on there. You have to it's, sprinkle uh, the paprika. You know? It is the total white person. Uh, um, I oh, feel yeah. like if you're white and you go to like a potluck or a Super Bowl party like that, and you don't bring deviled eggs, you're pretty you much shunned. Yeah. shunned. Yeah, you're just, shunned. it's like a giant <laughs> F you to the crowd. Yeah, you yeah, know? absolutely. I mean, that's been going on for quite some time too, those deviled eggs and uh, yeah. appetizers, you know? <laughs> yeah. This yeah. isn't like a recent event or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> and if you know you're going to be the only white person at this party, then uh, you, probably you shouldn't doubly have a responsibility <laughs> of bringing the deviled eggs or people are going to be pissed because yeah. no one else is bringing them. No, it's no. got to be the white guy. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen a Mexican show up with uh, deviled eggs to a party, dude. Just gonna no, say. It, it's yeah. it's never happened ever. No, uh, -uh. no, no. It's not, like not in the Latin culture. Nope. Yeah, yeah. But you're being it, man. I just wanted to apologize about the whole thing right now because uh, I I didn't I thought it was peas. <laughs> I thought, well, like, he's hey, so well, white he doesn't know what beans to use <laughs> yeah, i didn't know what yeah the, well i thought that at first i'm like are those peas i mean i mean I, I was like well you know i like split pea soup you know it's cool <laughs> maybe you just took all the water out i don't know <laughs> but i didn't want to piss you off steve because because i know what you kind of people i didn't want you to eat me or anything yeah because <laughs> only white people eat people <laughs> You know, unfortunately, I think we have, a, a, we have a monopoly on that market when it comes to the Jeffrey Dahmers or just any of the top... Um, the Canadian cannibal? Yeah, any yeah. of the cannibals. Uh, you can be damn certain it's a, it's, a, it's a white guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, us Latin people just like to stab people. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stabbers. Pencils, yeah. sharpened number twos. <laughs> screwdrivers are great. Dull. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Even like to scrape uh, and stab uh, uh, toilet seats, making sure you make your, your leave your mark on uh, the toilet seat. You know what? That's something I just never understood. I've never caught anybody doing it. I don't know if they're Latin. I don't know if they're black. I don't know if they're white. They could just be like this like subculture of Asians for all I know. Uh, that's a good point. I've never actually like uh, stepped my uh, looked over <laughs> in the <Yeah>. next stall. <laughs> Well, you know, this is, I think it's like a whole thing. I mean, I don't know if they bring like engraving tools into like AM, PM bathrooms and they're just like, you know, like shy guy, little puppet. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the Joker. 
Joker, <laughs> Smiley, you know, Smiley, you know, but like, and then they'll cross one off and they'll put their set on there or whatever. I just don't understand it. And like, when do they do this stuff? It's like, it's so, I, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously, and there's like, all, sometimes you go into bathrooms and there's, you know, like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like there's an excessive of, amount. Yeah, an excessive amount of engraving on toilet seats. And uh, they love doing it on tile as well, I notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's kind of like carving your name in a tree. It just feels more permanent. Is that like giving your girlfriend a hickey or something? I don't know. Yeah. I don't get it. You're like leaving your mark? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things I have yet to understand in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish we could. Maybe we should bring a toilet seat engraver on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask him. <laughs> we'll get to the root of the problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Many a toilet seats, toilet seats have been ruined by this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely never wanted to sit down on one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, I sold my, um, I sold my old car, so I'm back down to just oh, one vehicle God, now. God, finally. Who it's about it time. Huh? Uh, well, <clears throat> I um. Uh, the other day when, uh, when I called you, I was like, man, this guy said that he's going to oh. buy my car and he, uh, you know, he said he'd be here at two o'clock oh, and I got to right. leave at like yeah. two forty. I told you, you know? he was going to be late, Steve. You and, you uh, you're all, Jose. he's going to be five minutes late. <laughs> at least. And, and I'm talking to you and it was two twenty. you know, so, uh, he's, he's already 20 minutes late and you're like, is he Mexican? And I said, yeah, actually he is. I, I had, I'm going to have to sell the car in Spanish. You know, he doesn't speak English. Well, you speak Spanish. I so. speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So it's no yeah. big deal. Uh, but uh, it's like, yeah, he is Mexican. And then you're like, oh yeah, he's, he's going to show up at like three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and oh, you, did you, and you didn't believe me. You didn't no, believe me. I was like, he's probably just wasn't, it. he sounded really interested. He said he'd be here at two o'clock, but it's two, you know, 30 now and he ain't here. And so I go out and uh, I'm getting ready to leave. And I was like, well, I guess I'll leave the for sale sign on there a little bit longer. And he's standing across the street like he'd been there for a long time. You know what I mean? Just the, the way he was talking with his buddies and stuff. And I was like, oh, hey. And I said, uh, um, were you still interested in the car? And he said, yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay. Well, you told me two o'clock, but I have to leave now. And then he's <laughs> like, oh, oh, all right. And he's trying to wheel and deal with me. And I'm like, dude, I got to go. I can't be late for this. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> so I did the power move of like, you know, I'm so fucking busy. I'm just going to leave even when you're ready to just hand me cash for this car. <laughs> and said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you obviously haven't heard of the Mexican five minutes, Steve. Because <laughs> it's a thing. It like, is. it's a thing. I mean, once you have that in your blood, you just can't get it out. I mean, you're just like perpetually late. So, yeah. You obviously yeah. don't understand. No, no, apparently <laughs> not. No, no. But he did come the, d the next day at exactly two o'clock and he bought the car. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because you were like his boss at that point and told me he was basically going to be in trouble. <laughs> You're like hefe. <laughs> yes. That's a first world problem. You're not right here. You're going to get fired. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's all right, man. I, I totally get it. You know, this happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, first world problems. Uh, we, we, got a, uh, we got a few uh, uh, top five. Top oh, well, five. Give me what, what's a good first world problem. Okay. I know what mine are. All right. Uh, okay. We already talked about the bigger gas tank. It didn't quite make the list, but uh, uh, number five, top um, – First world problem. Uh, due to COVID, for the second year in a row, my annual trip to Europe will be canceled. Oh, that's definitely a first world problem. That Absolutely. is a first world problem yeah. all the way. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Uh, I've actually experienced that myself, but, you know, cross out Europe and put uh, South America. Well, I just said screw it and went anyway. So I'm part of that crew. In <laughs> <laughs> a matter of fact, I'm leaving again. You're going again, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't get enough of traveling during COVID. <laughs> Super spreader. <laughs> you know what? You know what the kicker was? Is every single time I leave the country and come back, nobody says shit <laughs> they didn't even check like a hand sanitizer they're, they're just i got a message from t-mobile said like yo maybe you should quarantine yourself for two weeks i'm like cool thanks bro <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they seem to care wipe yeah they yeah they, they seem to care up. more than the uh than the uh, state or federal government i guess you know because <laughs> why i walked right through with another 350 people nobody said crap <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It was funny. Uh, okay, number four. Uh, number four, first world problem. The escort girl I usually book for Tuesday evenings is out of town. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's a first world problem. I've experienced that myself. I hate <laughs> it when that happens. I hate it. I mean, mine's usually Wednesday, but hey, who, who's counting the days, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number three. The battery died in my gate opener remote, and I can't get into my own house. Oh, that makes complete sense. I mean, that's definitely, I get that. That's definitely a first world problem. Yeah, yeah. When you're coming home from work and you go to click the gate and it just won't open. And yeah. that's when you realize that you don't have a man gate. Yeah. This is the only way in. Yeah. You don't remember the pin. You haven't had to use it in three years because that's the last time you changed your gate opener battery. Yeah. The regular people just park on the street and have to deal with like, you know, parking enforcement. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> horrible, Mon horrible. Yeah, Monday street cleaning. <laughs> uh, number two, tartar control, teeth whitening, or sensitive gum. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely for I mean, I, I can't even make a decision on that stuff when I buy toothpaste. It's, just it's like there's just too many of them, you know what I'm I mean? Sitting like, there, it's like mental masturbation trying to figure that out. You know, this is shit I never have to deal with when I like travel down to uh, um. Uh, you know, um, I don't know, El Salvador Honduras. or something. Yeah, there, there's just like one toothpaste two, there. Two, you know? Colgate or AIM. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the level of decision you got to make there. First world problems, you got 23 of them to choose from and you just did. They all look good. Hey, you know what? Shopping for toothpaste is, it's difficult. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy. Like I just sit there and just, I'm just like, okay, do I need my teeth more white? Do I need tartar? I don't know. I need fresh breaths. Oh, you know, they're feeling a little sensitive. Maybe the Sensodyne. I don't know. You know, it's, it's like, ah, what about my gums? Yeah. What about my gums? They need help too. You yes. know, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's not getting any easier out there either. So no, no, it's only getting more difficult Totally get that shit. Um, and the number one, uh, first world problem, the water in my infinity pool evaporated a couple inches so now it just looks like a regular pool oh man yeah well i wish i had that problem and i don't <laughs> yeah yeah it, i mean yeah. it, something like that you know when that happens in my infinity pool it's just literally unswimmable yeah i mean you, you have people actually go in there after that that's weird yeah i, I don't even know if it's safe yeah. um and um you know i have found i think the best solution though when that happens is i just pull out some of my gold bars and i throw them in the pool and what that does is it kind of you know it raises the water level artificially because you know it uh, just brings it right back up by displacing it with volume why don't you just throw your fat girlfriend in there <laughs> <laughs> i think you have a couple of them <laughs> you call one of them chunky monkey hopefully she's not listening <laughs> I want Sorry, the water man. level to be even, not overflowing, yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you don't want splash all over it. I get it, Steve. <laughs> she does oh. do a good cannonball, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, I started taking up uh, your uh, little health tip here, kind of segue. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you do the, um, the lemons. Right. So you'll squeeze the oh, lemon yeah. into you got a lemon tree out in the backyard. Yeah. And, it uh, kind of helps out a little. Yeah. You literally have an unlimited supply of lemons. I don't think I you literally ever... I do. I, yeah. I can't give them away. Matter of fact, I think you've even come over and picked some yourself. Oh, I did. Yeah. After Super Bowl, uh, during Super Bowl halftime, you know, because guys don't care about halftime. I'm going to have you the cut the grass, do. too. But... <laughs> <laughs> I went out there and got a whole Vons bag full of them. And I, I didn't even make a dent in the tree. It was like, yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah, gonna so, lie. I, th I thought you took a little too many, but that was just me. I being a little aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you're being a little aggressive. You know, you 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 know, I gave you the hand and you took the arm. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna start making lemon pies and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding, but man. you, you, you uh, <laughs> so there's there's health benefits to uh, uh, to drinking lemon juice, I guess, right? Uh, well, I actually do it every morning. Uh, lemon little cap full of apple cider vinegar and water kind of hydrate and then i also keep lemons i squeeze a bunch of lemons and i put them in ice trays okay and, uh, that actually i like that it doesn't taste as good or as fresh as the fresh squeeze but it's kind of nice because you can just throw a couple in your uh, you know your little water or something or take it to go for the day so you're not sitting there squeezing a bunch of lemons so what you can do as well is you actually squeeze a bunch put them in the ice tray 
in a few ice trays, take them out and then put them in little freezer bags. So that works kind of well too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you want to put too many in there because then they get bunched up and that's kind of like you have a pack of solid ice. So then you got to break it up and that's going to be a pain in the ass. I, yeah. I remember you telling me about the health benefits of um, uh, tea. the lemon juice and, uh, and the tea and everything. So I started uh, religiously squeezing lemon juice uh, into my beer. Oh yeah. Well, that's called the chilada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm really gonna, I'm gonna make this thing a healthy, uh, healthy yeah, drink right yeah. here. Yeah, but I'm gonna take those fresh squeezed like lemon cubes and just uh, make a chilada with them. Yeah. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're putting it to good use, getting your vitamin C while you're drinking your beer and getting fat. I get it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Not to be mistaken with a michelada, though, right? No, no. The michelada is the. It's either tomato, tomato or tomato juice. Yeah, I, I'm sure very few people would notice the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, salt on the rim with like a, you know, some type of lager, like usually yeah. like a Mexican. Lager. I like the chilada because you can kind of drink more of them. And then when you put the ice cubes in there, it kind of melts it a bit. So I feel like I can get a few more in. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Nice. You know, nice. it kind of waters it down. Pro tip. Pro it tip. Makes it last a little longer, especially if you're on the beach. <laughs> Where I was telling you about the uh, possum that I got in my backyard, right? Uh, that ugly freaking thing. Oh, he's adorable. Yeah, I set out uh, uh, a little thing of water for him. And then every night I leave a hard boiled egg on the fence and then he'll come down and grab it and then go back to his tree. Dude, you got like a possum pet? I got a possum pet, yeah. Dude, those things are disgustingly ugly and they spit and they eat all your avocados. (laughs) Well, he hasn't spit on me yet. I'm almost to the point to where I I can pet him. Oh, God, that's just disgusting. Oh, God, if anybody knows what the North American possum looks like, dude, they're, 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 like, they're like furry rats. They're just <laughs> gross. Dude, they, they're the most, like, hideous looking. You know, go to Australia and go look at the possums there. They're all cute and cuddly. Those you want to pet. These here, these are just, these are just, I mean, oh, man, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I think he's cute. He's like yeah. a little cat. Yeah. He's like a little yeah. cat. Well. He's eaten up to four hard-boiled eggs one night. I just yeah. kept bringing out and putting more just to see how many he would eat. Maybe you should start making deviled eggs for him, Steve. <laughs> Shit, because he's going to be <laughs> farting up a storm with those things, man. I can't imagine what his night was like. I mean, this thing is smaller than a cat, and he ate four hard-boiled eggs. That's a, that's a oh. big meal for a human. You that know? sounds pretty gassy to me. Like, oh, my God. Man, that was great. <laughs> you start giving him treats soon, some, some bacon bits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, possums are cool. They're great, you know, and everything. But yeah, just uh, pets. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you've had uh, uh, some strange pets, uh, haven't you? Uh, yeah, but that was like, you know, a grown man shouldn't have weird pets. Dude, after the age of like 18, you got to start having like well, did, Didn't you used to have a piranha or something? Yeah, I did. I had a goanna. A goanna. Yeah, but like I said, I got rid of all those things like, by 21. What? Uh, so African, the- African monitor lizard, it was called. Yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. I, I thought you had a piranha, no? Oh, the piranha. God, I apologize. God, I obviously can't hear right either. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Back in uh, high school, me and my buddy went to Vegas and uh, we picked up some piranhas because they're illegal in California. And then we're like, oh, cool piranhas. You know? And then we had like a tank for them and we're like, oh, this is cool. They eat chicken and shit. <laughs> like we <were> just <laughs> feeding it like T-bones. <laughs> and then these things are just like, eat our like eating and then like after a while we're like we can't really feed these things anymore we got a problem <laughs> so we're like what do we do with piranhas we can't just take them to the local pet store <laughs> so like one night we just kind of crept out and there was a park um, a very well-known park in the city mm-hmm. and uh a uh, park with a lot of turtles <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was known it was known for having the turtles so we let the piranhas out in the lake, in the park lake. And like about, I don't know, about three weeks later, we were reading the, like the newspaper and it was like, piranhas eat turtles. Somebody let piranhas out. And <laughs> this is like where families go. And the piranhas like ate all the turtles. <laughs> so yeah, it's a pretty terrible thing to do. Oh, this is yeah, I, feel, I still feel bad to this day. So I, I could probably still get a rest. Statue of limitations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like who, who could do such a thing yeah and ate like all the, the the piranhas ate all the turtles in the in the park 
<laughs> I wonder if they just had to wait for him to starve to death and then they could reintroduce turtles or something. I, I don't know, know, man. It was like a thing. It was even in the paper. I mean, I was like, how many piranhas those... did you put in there? No, we only we only put two piranhas, but I, I guess oh, they eat a lot. Or they're just killing them for fun. I don't know, but huh. like all the tur- turtles were gone. I mean, there weren't big turtles. They were like the little turtles, you know. Okay, yeah, appetizer size. Yeah, appetizer size, deviled egg size. <laughs> yeah, deviled eggs. <laughs> well, that's better. You know, I was a rotten teenager. What can I say? <laughs> Oh, that's great. Right on. Well, um, should we bring in uh, Shaman O? Oh, yeah, man. Let's get straight up on that frog poison, man. All right, let's do it. Uh, We'll take a quick break. And next up, Shaman O. I got supersonic speed that I used to run to you. I stretch my arms for miles and miles. Shaman O, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for for the invite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Daniel and I uh, were talking and we're like, you know, he he, uh, brought it up and he's like, we should have him on the show. And I'm like, you know, that would be very, very interesting. So we talked you up a little bit uh, on the uh, previous show. And um, yeah, yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, So how did um, ayahuasca, how did you get uh, involved in that? How did uh, you and uh, your girlfriend like start the journey? Um, she found um, a shaman, and um, he was here in California um, hosting some some ceremonies. So we decided to to go and see what ayahuasca was. And since we were already walking the path of the the medicine, we took it as like, okay, we should go check it out and have this open eye opening or life changing experience you know so we went yeah. and um we we liked it it helped us you know it it did open our eyes to a whole new realms of existence wow so then we were like okay we need to go to the original place so we decided to go to peru and I think we went within three to four months of the first. Uh, yeah. Oh, you guys were sold right away. Huh? Yeah. We're, like, okay. yeah. <laughs> we're all in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, screw California. Yeah. We're going to the source. Yeah. Cause we had it. I know it was um, my girlfriend's birthday. Like that was kind of like, like our, a gift. So it was in June and then we were over there by March. And this was in Peru. Yeah. Yeah, we were in Peru in March, and we had it here in California in June. Yeah, wow. so, and so about nine months later, yeah, we were on the plane. And over there, we um, met our shaman. His name is um, Don Lucho. And Don Lucho, uh, he's from the Aguaruna tribe in, in, in Iquitos, Peru. You know, and then... Um, we connected with them. We spent some time with them over there. So our bond just kind of grew as time went by. And he saw the calling. Seemed like he saw the calling in you guys. Yes. Yes. Cause we shared a little bit with them, like kind of what we already did. Like we did already over here, like ceremonies. Um, my girlfriend has um, a ceremony that spirit gifted her is called breathing journey. So breathing journey is another great way of um, journeying without taking anything. Oh, wow. That's just pretty much you're breathing oxygen. And obviously everybody knows that oxygen is kind of what keeps us alive. You know, we don't breathe, we, we die. So yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I haven't tried yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's been going great for me yeah. for 41 years with it. No I, time to stop I, now. Please try the other side of the coin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so through that ceremony, we kind of already experienced the, the other realms, you know. And I guess our our the shaman saw that we were already in that path. So he was very comfortable sharing um stuff about the medicine and other rounds with us so he entrusted you guys with the medicine correct 
Yeah. He saw he saw a couple of pupils that were brighter than the rest of the class. And he's Why like, are they okay, sitting in the so front? He's, he's too here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas Ube has been coming here for five years and he doesn't know anything. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know that that's, that's funny. Now, what um, <laughs> what uh, I've talked a little bit about it on the show, and anyone that has heard of ayahuasca has probably got to be asking themselves, why would I go through this and then throw up? Uh, like, what's, what's, um, uh, there, it's really important to go into it to set an intention, correct? Like, you should have something in your mind of like, uh, okay, this is what I want to focus the session on, or maybe there's something in you that you haven't really, like, let go maybe your dad died or and you never really processed it right it's really important to go into the ceremony with uh, a working intention is that accurate yes it's always good to to have a direction um the direction will always kind of center you or center your um your thoughts in the ceremony but that intention is not always um you can't anchor down to it you know because sometimes the, the medicine will show you other stuff that you need um healing on but the intention is very important because it will allow yourself to see what you're accepting to work on mm, you know interesting. i don't know if that makes Yo, sense. no no i got okay. it for people out there you know you you focus on a hamburger, but you might come out with fries, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted a happy meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly how the ceremony, I mean, the medicine works because um, you might need work on something more severe than on what you want healing from, you know? Yeah. Like some people might come... Um, searching for like, i don't know what's their next step in life like more guidance you know Would but, you say shamano more guidance yes mm -hmm. and they come out with like oh well you need to focus on the present now not on the future mm -hmm. you know and so people okay. i would okay. say you know it's either people go in because either one, either they need guidance or maybe they're trying to get through something or over something. Would that be correct? Yes. Like traumas. Um, some people want to heighten their, their psychic abilities or their medium abilities. Mm, interesting. Um, you know, some people might want to get over the heartbreak um some people will even just want a better life what if, they want to change uh -huh. i was gonna say what about like uh like people with depression or people with addictions because those seem to be a pretty big thing for quite a few people <laughs> so yes yes um we got a lot of um depression addiction addiction is a little bit hard because some people are not um aware of their addiction mm. you know but some people that are ready to move forward this will be perfect for them if they've been smoking for 50 years and they're just like <laughs> i just can't quit this 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 could be something that could very likely help them. yes right? it can um if they continue to like not just one time sometimes it takes like two or three times mm. because even as like for example there's a a, a, a diet or a cleansing way before sitting. So a smoker will maybe realize that by taking some stuff out, like maybe yeast out of their, their diet, um, red meat, um, greasy stuff, they will even start feeling automatically better. And then once the ceremony gets closer, they could be like, okay, well, I'm gonna stop smoking. So then, that will automatically change the way they feel and see things. So they might just even qu quit. Like ha they'll be halfway quitting before even sitting. Mm. Even giving them more clarity, mm. you know, yeah. just the process alone. Correct. Mm. Yeah. And also too, like you were saying, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of people don't realize this, but I think a lot of people think, oh, I just go and I just do this. And it's kind of a one and done. But that was a surprise actually to myself and uh, I believe to others that, you know, 
sometimes or a lot of times it takes multiple sessions. Uh, anyway, I would maybe, you know, you know, more on that anywhere from, you know, one to four, or I don't know if there's an exact number. Um, no, there's not an exact number because um, different people are working in different layers. Um, you know, somebody might get tired on the first mile, another person might run the eight, mm -hmm. you know, it just depends on where your journey is on your healing. Um, but you'll start noticing a difference at, on the third, second time. Mm -hmm. And then that will want you to like, keep pushing forward on different um, situations in life that come up and you'll be like, okay, I might need to go and, and sit and how to, how to put it, like readjust everything. Mm -hmm. What, um, so what can someone expect uh, if they sign up for one of these ceremonies? First, there's a, um, the preparation, you, you kind of briefly touched on it, uh, a diet to follow a couple More weeks before, two, right? Oh, it's like a month, Steve. You all, <laughs> Steve obviously okay. didn't follow the diet. <laughs> That's probably why he crapped his pants. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> you might need to bring some toilet paper to the next ceremony, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> or, or one of those um, those diapers, yeah. you know, where you don't even yeah. have, you don't even yeah, have yeah, to get yeah. up. Like, how much is it going? <laughs> you won't be able to move. <laughs> Obviously, Steve is not following the diet very well, well everybody. People depends so. on your... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> it's usually a month. You know, to like like Daniel said, <laughs> you don't want to go on a full stomach. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> don't go to Definitely Jack in the Box drive-through before you uh, go to your ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> what um what are, what are some other ways to uh, to prep for it? Like, what could someone expect uh, leading up so, to this? So our um, our prep is um, it takes a month, which is four weeks. Um, the the first week you you start eliminating um, your red meat. The second week you start eliminating like your chicken and your fried stuff. Um, okay. On the third week you start reducing your your salt and sugar intake that one was tough that's tough when it starts getting down there i have to admit uh, yeah. yeah i think that's that's the toughest the the because sometimes we think oh i'm gonna just eat this protein bar <laughs> and you look at the bag and it's like oh wow it has 20 grams of sugar and like 10 grams of sodium you know so you know being aware of the the salt and the sugar on the the third week, that's a little bit hard. Yeah, I, but I, I kind of felt like I was eating bird seed last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, let me just down this with some air. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the the week of, then you start to do the the raw foods and the the steamed vegetables and and you know the white rice and stuff like that so that'll be the the preparation like a, a fast the final week is all vegetarian correct and and for okay. people that take um medications and stuff like that they will also have to start winging off on them you know like if people start take probiotics no antibiotics or painkillers um anything that will alter your heart you know, because when you're journeying, your your heart will tend to beat fast because it's more um, blood pumping through your body. So um, yeah, anything that will pretty much like you also eliminate coffee, oh. you know, so any stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> Co coffee is a tough one, too, you know. Um, so then that that's the, the the process before and then you kind of do the reverse once you set so you you'll do the same like you start off with the the veggies and then 
easily go into your sodium sugar and then mm-hmm. slowly into your chicken and then on the other month or the next three weeks then you could have like a normal diet but a lot, a lot of people keep their diet because they just feel good they feel better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. probably save a lot of money too huh. okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. T bones uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> New York strips. Fourteen ninety nine a pound steaks. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, t- yeah. What? Um, so, what can they expect when uh, when they sit? Like, how long? How long? You you take the uh, shot of uh, ayahuasca, and what what can they expect for the duration of the ceremony? How long? And what's it feel like? And so, um, once you take the shot. Almost anything that we consume, it takes about half an hour to 45 minutes to digest. So then those minutes is kind of like a a meditation to set like a, a ground base for, for your journey. And then once the the body breaks down the the medicine, that's when you start um, seeing like th- those pixels in the dark because it's... It, we sit in the dark as a night ceremony. Um, and then mm-hmm. you'll start seeing, it all depends how you prepare and, and, and where you're at, like I said before. But a lot of people experience um, the sacred geometry. You know, a lot of people go back in time, like to, to Egypt or to to the ancient Aztecs. That's so weird because like that's that. where I went. <laughs> I did. Oh, I wow. went to Egypt. I, I'm <laughs> not going to lie. Yeah. I'm sorry, Steve. I didn't tell you. <laughs> I saw the pyramids and the sunrise and it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's it good. Was, it was very, uh, very eye opening. <laughs> mm. huh. So, and then you start seeing a lot of like um, birds or or diff- like some people see snakes or because it it's like a vine so the the anaconda the plant you mean ayahuasca plant is a vine yeah. so so the anaconda okay. is a kind of like a representation of the ayahuasca vine mm. and then your body will start feeling like like lazy or or dizzy you know you you might become a little weak um tiredness sits in because you have to remember um you just took dmt so the body only releases dmt in dream world so the body thinks Ah. that it's time to go to bed you know so your your body automatically starts feeling like cozy and like wanting to to go to sleep and then some people experience like ultimate um epiphanies the sound heightens because as we're um facilitating we're we're playing instruments and singing oh, the, um, the icarus the, yeah yes the songs are, are called icarus so icarus. the icarus are the, 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 stepping stones uh-huh. oh, oh i was just gonna i'm sorry when you originally explained it to me it was um it was to keep to keep a person grounded, you know, through the process. So, correct. So, okay, you're, okay. you're setting stepping stones for whenever it's time to come back to your body, your soul, or your your um, energetic body will know where your body is. So it'll it is like leaving like Hansel and Gretel leaving those crumbs. So you could come back. Little cracker bits on the you trail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's time to come home. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a pretty uh, psychedelic experience. I remember when you started playing the didgeridoo, mm-hmm. uh, I could hear it. Uh, my, my sense of sound was increased. <clears throat> but the strange thing was I could also see the sound. Oh. So as you kind of went through the notes on the didgeridoo, uh, I could see colors emitting from the end of it, and the colors would change depending on the depth or length of the uh, uh, of the note. It was uh, very interesting. It's something I've never experienced before. Yes, yes, and and that's because um, 
sound is a wave and each wave has a vibration mm. so we are our five senses or however many senses we wake up during the ceremony they're all working together so that's why we our perception is beyond what we are normally used to seeing mm. yeah yeah it makes sense what you said about the DMT is is only produced during dreams and sleep and and that is a bit what it's like uh, uh during the uh, ceremony is uh yeah it's kind of yeah, like you're, you're dreaming, receiving you're yes. receiving uh, at least for me uh you know I mean I know other people as well but just you know you're receiving messages as well through this whole process mm -hmm. you know yeah because yeah. um for me Oh, no, no, never mind. Because the, well, our gland that produces um, the DMT is, is our pineal gland. So it says that only three times in our life experience, we, we release DM3, DMT through the pineal gland. And it's during birth, during dreams, and during death. Wow. She's got one more to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what, um, yeah, for me, it was, a, I've talked a little bit about it on the show before. Uh, for me, it was uh, letting go. I, I went in with an intention of letting mm -hmm. go and I had, um, um, recently gotten divorced and was just, you know, mad at myself and my ex. And I basically needed to forgive, uh, forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what, um, this process was for me. Uh, but I took it to the next step after the ceremony was done with ayahuasca. I still didn't feel like I had really let it go. And that's when, um, um, it was another shaman leading it at, at the one I went with you, uh, but um, she gave me the frog poison. Okay. And that uh, what that involves is is she basically burns your skin to allow an open avenue for this poison to get into your bloodstream, and then she oh, puts the frog up. poison on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember as she did that within about. 15 seconds i i literally felt you like were. i was dying like it, uh, I, I i think i there was a part of me that was yeah and i i looked up at her and uh, with you know what must Probably have like looked like a stimpy. terrified face <laughs> and she kind of had this calming yeah <laughs> she had this calming effect and she's like yeah. just you'll die now work. and i'm like i'm gonna die in their living room right now that's what's gonna happen <laughs> you're like i love you all <laughs> but eventually yeah, eventually, after about 15 minutes or so, I could feel myself getting kind of sick. And then you were watching me, and you said, I don't know what you're holding on to, man. Just <laughs> let it go. Awesome. You know? And, uh, and as soon as you said that, oh. then I threw up in the bucket, and I was like, wow, I feel a lot better now. It feels good to, you know, let that one out, let that one go. And it, uh, I've never been the same since. It, uh, it worked. Can can you talk a little bit about and the frog? There's poison? another that's, name that's for all it I know too. Though, I just know what it works. Yeah, I, there's got to be a more technical <laughs> name than frog poison. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's called combo. Combo. That's um, right. Combo. Yeah, with combo? the K. K O oh, okay. M B O. Right. Um, and yeah, the 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 combo works through the lymphatic system. Um, that's why we we do the burns, so it can um go through the body. So that one is more of a an intense medicine it's a a masculine and it's a fire um medicine um that one is also a, a small preparation you need i believe 12 hours of fasting um so it's usually done in the mornings you um have to drink enough water to be hydrated um there's no specific time um water as long as you're hydrated, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously somebody that weighs like 200 needs more water than somebody that weighs like one, 150. So um, the hydration is very important. Um, 
And that medicine is like how you said is within 20 minutes to half an hour, but it's very intense. Um, so it, the body is just pretty much fight, the immune system gets activated and it's fighting anything that it's foreign to the body. Um, we purge um, the, the best purge is when you get to the vial, when, when you start seeing your, the, the purge, when it's like yellowish greenish. What color was yours, you know? Steve? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was exactly that. <laughs> it was exactly Yellow that. and green make blue. <laughs> <laughs> but um and and that's yeah. a very a very good um medicine as well you know the the burns we call them portals mm. and it it's also depending on how how your weight is somebody might be good with one portal somebody might need like 10 of them you know like for me to get to that that vial the the the, the greenish yellowish I need about 10, oh, wow. 10 burn. Oh, wow. You're like a burn victim yeah. at that point, Sean Mano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what, uh, you know what firemen call burn victims, right? <laughs> no. Just be critters. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> when they get a call, they're like burn victims. They actually call them crispy critters. It's terrible. <laughs> it's horrible and vile, but it's like gallows humor you know? <laughs> it's just a way to deal with it uh, no that's uh wow yeah that's that, that's a lot of burning going on <laughs> well i mean they're yeah, little yeah. dots it's not like you burn a whole arm not like you're branding bury it there you know <laughs> no it's something the size of like the end of a toothpick uh, probably or a ballpoint pen you know a little yeah, circular a, burn like that on your arm yeah. Yeah. like a tooth like a toothpick like a toothpick yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah, yeah, like toothpick. Yeah, <laughs> not like a wrought iron yeah. or anything. You know? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember when she was burning holes in my arm. I'm like, I'm, I'm paying for this. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm paying people to burn me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to burn me and then make me feel like I'm dying. Oh. Is, wow, I'm, I volunteered for some strange shit, and I'm still in the same country. <laughs> Yeah. So welcome to 2021. <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, you know, in all seriousness, um, you know, the it's it's important. Uh, that makes a lot of sense with the portals and and everything. So a lot of people don't know about the combo. So uh, I think it's a really good to bring up. And uh, I think it's um, as it was explained to me through Shaman No, it's just. Um, and you're a testament to it, Steve. Um, I think it's just a really great way and people really holding on to something and just really, you know, get, getting that release or letting go, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a buddy who's got, uh, his grandfather recently died maybe a year ago. And he told me the other day, he's all, you know, I've never even cried about that. Like, I, I just have trouble, like, accepting mm -hmm. it. And I, the first thing I thought of was like, man, he needs yeah. to do a ceremony with you. He needs, he needs, uh, he needs to be, he needs be to get perfect. burned. Yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> or, or drink tea. Yeah. Get some combo. Yeah. Or, or yeah. you know, yeah, because I think we, without even realizing it, we carry around a lot of this stress. And it gets stored in our muscles, you yes. know, and over years of time, that'll develop into some radical knot that affects the way they walk. And now they're not symmetrical anymore, which will lead to more health problems. And, and you know, whether um, talking to a therapist is your thing or ayahuasca or, um, I don't know, something else, then, you know, it, uh, it can be, it can really be an avenue yeah, that could, no, uh, that I, could help yeah. someone. Yeah, you know? no, I want to make it, a definitely note help on me. that. Uh, maybe Shamano, you can... Uh, uh, chime in on that as well. But, um, you know, the uh, best way, you know, someone asked me about it and the process and everything. And the best way for me to describe it was it was like the best life coach, you know, that, that you could get, you know, I thought that was a really good way, at least for me, um, you know, the best, you know, like therapy life coach kind of like all in one. <laughs> yeah. B yeah. Yeah. Because it's a, a, a discipline, you know, um, it's a spiritual discipline because you know that um, it's going to benefit you in the long run. And then after a while, it just becomes a, a way of life. Right. You know, you don't even see it as like, oh, my God, I need to wake up 
at six in the morning and go to the gym or nothing like that. You know, you just be like, all right, cool. Another day, let's do this. Yeah. So ceremony will eventually become like that. Um, or at least it has become to us like that because we see that it is life changing and it, it does help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. yeah, it, yeah. Uh, Very cool. Uh, one, Very cool. Go ahead. Um, Oh, do you have any other uh, questions, um, Daniel? No, I think we covered actually a lot of, a lot of material. Um, we covered quite a bit, actually. I just think, you know, for, you know, any suggestions, you know, Shamano for, you know, because pe there's a lot of people, you know, that I believe are interested, you know, they just don't know how to go about it, you know, maybe, you know, what to look for, you know, someone, you know, like, hey, how do I reach out and try to get somebody who's, who's good? Because at least for me, um, being in an intimate uh, setting with not too many people that was important to me at least um, you know there was just there was just a few things there you know I, I just kind of got lucky I believe you know or maybe uh, you know I just universe calling a little bit and uh, I just happened to reach out to the right people um, at the right time but you know I think there's a lot of people out there that you know they need help and they would like to reach out and but like what's the best way for somebody you know who's interested in in doing something because i was at a point where i was like hey i'm just gonna go to peru <laughs> and then when i found out i kind of didn't have yeah. to i was like well that saves me some cash <laughs> yeah yeah and, time. <laughs> and a lot of time and uh, i don't have to go yeah. to the jungle and hang out yeah. <laughs> not that i don't want to but um I, I think the first step is realizing what's causing any discomfort um, and you wanting to make that change of life. Mm. I think that's the very first. Because then after that, then you'll know that you're going to put your heart into it, um, your emotions into it, your, your sweats into mm -hmm. it. So once you realize that that is for you, that you're willing to go the extra mile to better yourself to to change and know that it's not an experience it's a, a way of life then I think that that's when you'll get the full benefits and full results of the the medicine because you're not gonna um, half-ass anything you know you're gonna give it your all mm. and I think once people realize that it is life changing and it will give you um, positive results in the end. That's when people really start to appreciate it and, and want to come back um, more than once. Yeah. I, I have to admit, Shamano, I was actually, I mean, I was a little scared, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, Oh my God, am I going to do this? Am I going to come back? Um, is this going to be some weird thing I do? Like, lsd in high school or something am i gonna wake up okay like it was you know it was, it was like i was like maybe i might not come back i'm gonna be stuck in the spirit world uh you know <laughs> i just didn't know but um just from my own personal experience um you know waking up the next day i actually felt amazing i'm like why did i didn't do this sooner you know um it was just a great great experience overall on so many different levels um you said one thing um to me that i that really stood out and that was, you know, acting on the messages that are sent to you while you're journeying, because you were saying, you know, there is people that, you know, they do journey and they do get messages maybe to do something, go somewhere in a certain direction, but, you know, they don't act on that. And I thought that was a really important point. At least for me, I did everything to the T and I'm really glad that I did. But I, you, like you had mentioned, um, you know, doing what is asked of you, I guess, while you're journeying. Yeah, because going back to setting the intention, um, once you set the intention is because you're asking for something or you want something to be different. So the, the medicine, the ayahuasca will show you how to make that difference. And a lot of people might be like how you said, Daniel, like, oh, maybe it could be you have to quit your job yeah. or maybe you have to contact an old friend or you have to make that be a, a bigger person and contact somebody that you've had problems with before. 
Um, it could be visit your grandparents' graveyard. It could be even just something as simple as like, I'm going to take a different route to work today, mm. you know, like switch it up. And a lot of people don't yeah. follow that. They're stuck on their routine. And sometimes routine could be bad, you know, because they're not allowing space for new things to come in, yeah. you yeah. know? And, and yeah. I think that's what some people will say like, Oh, the medicine didn't work for me. I didn't get nothing out of it because they, they're not willing to take that opportunity to change or to, to allow themselves to, to feel emotions. Yeah. 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 You, know, you know, you're absolutely right. And uh, you know, the, some of the things that, uh, that I was kind of called, I guess, um, you know, for lack of a better wording, but um, you know, that I was kind of, you know, my messages and things that were sent to me that I, to do, you know, the, none of them was, you know, particularly easy. And, you know, I, I went through with it and I'm just so mm -hmm. happy that I did, but it, yeah. it, you know, some of the, at least from my own experience, it's not easy. It isn't some of the things that they tell you to do or this, and it's kind of like, well, why would I do that? This doesn't make any, it doesn't, it might, yeah. it might not make any sense <laughs> at that time. And then it makes sense, obviously, after you do it. <laughs> so I can attest to that. Yeah. So. It's like how they say, you might ask for something, but creator gives you what you need. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the uh, toughest thing to do is what you most yeah. need to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know? but, uh, and this is uh, yeah. an example of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, th Shamano, thank you for coming on the show. This was really informative. And uh, if you're listening and this sounds uh, at all interesting to you, uh, contact me and then I can um, get you in contact with uh, Shamano. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on. And yeah, thank you, Shamano, man. I appreciate you your time. For... Yeah, it was, uh, that was really cool. It was really cool. No Thank worries. You. Thank you guys for yeah. allowing me this platform and glad I could um, share stuff with you guys and hopefully we can change people's lives. Yeah, that, and, that, and that's why we wanted you on yes. the show is yes. you know, just kind of reach out to some people and because uh, a lot of people have a lot of curiosity about, about things like this and I believe it really helps people out there, you know, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Good deal. Right on. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, here is your weekly motivational speech. And as Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but rather by the seeds you plant. And that's what knowledge is. That's what the learning process is, is you're learning something today that you may not even understand how it's going to be valuable. But one day, that piece of knowledge is going to come to your aid one day. That thing that you learned is going to be something that you're going to lean on one day. That thing that you've worked your ass off to understand better than anybody else in the world. It's going to help you change the world. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Where I got my work ethic from? was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the Val Victorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy that, that Val Victorian studied for an hour, and you know, I caught you. I caught you, and I'm in love. But I have the work at the, to catch you. Whatever you need to do, do it. Stop crying, and just keep hustling. You're stronger than you think. You haven't discovered all that's in you. You'll never know how strong you really are until you face pressure that you've never faced. You put in 120% every time, or you don't put in nothing because listen to me very closely today this opportunity you have it might not be here next year it might not be here the year after next it might not be here the year after that this is the only moment you got and you better take advantage of this particular moment by continuing to push forward by continuing to run toward my dream i've got what it takes to make it
Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. You need to care about everything, and it starts with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that.